What do you think of when you hear Texas Chainsaw Massacre? When I hear that, I think, holy crap, this is the scariest movie <laughs> of all time. The original and the remake, I think both are very scary. I saw the remake first, and then when I went back and saw the original, this was just a few years ago, I was a grown adult, and I still was scared. I still was deeply disturbed by what I saw, and it was directed by Toby Hooper. The sequel, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, was also directed by Toby Hooper, and you would think that would be a good thing for a guy that delivered such terror and such originality in a story that is so effed up. He would want to deliver more of the same and continue with the terror. But no! In 1986, 12 years later, I guess he decided, well, uh... Let's go for goofy and funny. Because that's what you think of when you hear and see Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Funny. The beginning of this movie, you see two high school kids. They're driving to a football game. And these two are such assholes. They are. I know they're young. I know they're teenagers. And believe me, when I was a teenager, I did some dumb stuff too. <laughs> Nothing probably quite this dumb, but still you see them drinking and driving. So you're pretty much thinking, all right, well, these guys can't be killed any sooner. And there's even a moment when they take a gun out and start just randomly shooting it. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Hopefully they're not the main characters of this movie. They end up calling this radio show and they're harassing the DJ named Stretch. She's on the line with them and she's trying to get them to hang up, but they they won't. So she can't. For whatever reason, she just doesn't hang up on them. She can't hang up on them. So she's like forced to listen to them. And as they're passing by this pickup truck, Leatherface is in the back of the truck and he attacks them. And he has a chainsaw, and he's he's going nuts, and he's destroying the car, and the kids are freaking out. Leatherface even slices one of the kids, the driver's, heads off. It is bloody. It is gory. So, sure, there's that. And the other kid freaks out. The, the car crashes, and they both die. All of this is broadcasted on the radio. The next morning, Lieutenant Lefty, played by Dennis Hopper, he is investigating this case. He is, in fact, the uncle of Sally and Franklin from the original movie. And I do like this, not just because I like Dennis Hopper, the actor. He's a really good actor, and I instantly go, all right, this is a guy that I'm willing to follow. Uh, but him being connected to two main characters of the first movie, having a personal stakes to this, I like. I just I think it instantly makes a main character that you can connect with, feel for, especially because he thinks maybe they're still alive. We know at least Franklin isn't. And Stretch talks to Lefty, tells him about the audio. He wants her to play the audio on the radio again so that when people hear it they won't think that he's crazy because i guess people think he's crazy now don't believe him and so she does let's talk about stretch stretch is played by caroline williams and i'm not saying i dislike this actress that i personally dislike her or have anything against her but i don't like her performance and that could be direction, that could be the writing. Maybe the script says, Stretch screams a lot. <laughs> Maybe it literally says, hey, Stretch is going to be a screamer, and that's all she's going to do is scream and yell and freak out and be hysterical. I know this is a messed up situation. I know that if I was in this situation, I'd be upset and probably screaming too. But when I watch a movie, do I want to see my main character screaming for nearly an hour or more? 
No, I don't. I find it interesting how she gets involved with, you know, the, the phone call, the radio station. She was willing to play the audio on the radio, so it showed some guts there. But I just... And maybe it's because this movie was in the 80s and you think more of nowadays with female characters that for the most part they're strong and capable and and smart where this girl just is annoying. <laughs> really, really annoying. The family arrives at the radio station because I guess they heard the audio as well. Bill Mosley plays Chop Top. And he's a good actor, believe me, I'm not crapping on him as an actor or even his performance here. It's just uh, his look of uh, his his head being shaved and you seeing the metal under under his skin. I don't know. it's just it just it seems too over the top, seems too unbelievable. Chop top attacks one of Stretch's co-workers, beats the crap out of him. and then Leatherface goes after Stretch. Here we go with Leatherface, right? This is Leatherface. Uh, I, I'm not going to say he's the most terrifying part of the first movie, although he probably is. But he's definitely the most memorable part of the first movie. Uh, the look of him, what he did with the skin, and the weapons he used, and how he chased people, chased them with the chainsaws. Like, it's just that's who you talked about after it. So you can't wait to see what they would do with him in a sequel. So what do we get? We see him about to go after Stretch. And then she's able to woo him. She's able to charm him and convince him not to hurt her. I, I know Leatherface is... He's a little... Uh, I don't want to say retarded. Is that is that a word that we're just not allowed to say anymore? Retarded? Well, Leatherface is a cannibal evil villain so fuck him he's retarded all right so i know that i know that it's not the most unbelievable idea that some uh, pretty chick can can woo him but i don't want to see it i don't want to see him outsmarted like this or, or just taken advantage of like this it just makes him look too dumb and when you look too dumb that's where you become less threatening and to make Leatherface less threatening less scary the least scary of the family that's not what I'm here for I'm not here for a Leatherface to feel bad for I'm not here for a Leatherface to where I sympathize with and feel oh maybe he's just misunderstood and abused and blah 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 no he is a big dumb killing machine and maybe it was because of his upbringing. Maybe he was raised the wrong way. Sure. But still, he's a killer. <laughs> and he enjoys doing what he does. He even goes and tells Chop Top that he killed Stretch. Just to kind of get him off of her, her way. And no. Now you have him lying about it. Ugh. What the fuck. And again, this is the same director who made him scary. And now he's making him pussy whipped. Stretch ends up uh, following these two to the Sawyer family because they took the body of the coal worker. And I will say this. This underground carnival that the Sawyer family are, are, are using for their home is pretty cool. It's creative. It's different. It makes sense that they would stumble upon something like this and want to stay it's very memorable you look at it and you go yeah this is a pretty cool hideout for a villain for a cannibal family you see all the lights up and you see all the old games and decorations and then stretch is is underground she's trying to trying to get through and, and hide but leatherface finds her and he puts the skin of her friend's face on her and ties her up. And this is gross. I know that they tortured Sally in the first film. And that dinner scene, that torture scene with Sally is hard to watch. And it's one of the most disturbing sequences of that first movie. 
But now you're just being gross, and now you're just being silly with the skin on her and how she looks. And then when she tries to get out of this, and she's walking around with this guy's face on her face. Why? Why? Because it's funny, right? Ah ha ha ha. And uh, the co-worker wakes up, so he's not dead, but his face is missing, which looks really gross. He unties Stretch, saves her, and then he dies. <laughs> because why not? Why not have any other characters live through this? Lefty, Dennis Hopper, he followed the car, and he shows up with a bunch of weapons. And this is why I like Dennis Hopper. This is why I like the character in the movie, because he just doesn't give an F. You have all of these other cops and these characters who can't do anything or won't do anything, and he doesn't care. He's willing to get down and dirty. He's willing to break some laws if it means getting revenge or finding his nephew. And when he goes in there, he starts trashing the place, starts destroying stuff and knocking stuff over. He finds the remains of Franklin, which I guess is a sad moment. But like I said, we as an audience already knew this. Drayton Sawyer now finds Stretch because she just keeps getting caught now. Great, Stretch. Uh, Drayton Sawyer, the same actor from the original movie. So I guess that was nice that they brought him back. And we get our own dinner table scene. We have to do it again. It does make sense. You're going to redo this. This is what the family does. This is their trademark. This is what they love to do. It makes you wonder, though, well, the first time he tried this or the, or the, the last time we saw them do this with somebody, they escaped, they broke out, they ran off, and that's why you had to relocate, right? So maybe not torture or play with your food this time if you're gonna kill her and if you're gonna actually this time eat her then just do it the torturing like yeah fine you guys are hillbillies you're rednecks you're 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 dumbasses you're retarded but it just it's it's a it's a consistency that's now been played with the franchise where every movie feels like they have to do something like this. You would think the family would have realized after time after time that playing with them and torturing them only gives them enough time to escape. Chop Top, once, once he realizes that Stretch is still alive, yells at Leatherface. So, of course, we're going to demean Leatherface and, again, make us feel bad for the fuck grandpa sawyer is here great the aspect of the first movie that was genuinely creepy especially once you realize that the grandpa is still alive he's just that old this time it's so many years later i don't buy that this grandpa is still alive i really don't um and how they have him once again using the weapons on her hitting her and then eating the food and how he looks it's just it's gross gross not nearly as scary or disturbing as the first movie lefty shows up he finds where they are he saves stretch he fights with the family he uses weapons the the chainsaw and whatnot i just like seeing dennis hooper i like seeing him dennis hopper i like seeing him just be nuts he gets totally nuts in the sequence where he's just fighting everyone, he he has a chainsaw fight with Leatherface and actually kills him, which is shocking, or fatally injures him. Leatherface, again, doesn't get shit to do here. It seems like Toby Hooper or, or the writers didn't know what to do with Leatherface again or didn't realize how much of a horror icon this character was, could have been, Definitely was misused. Definitely was mishandled. Leatherface is completely wasted in the second film. And and then a grenade goes off that was there from one of the other dead bodies. Like, it just it accidentally explodes and kills everyone. What the fuck? This is the fate of Lefty, our hero? I don't mind him maybe sacrificing himself to save Stretch or to kill our characters once he realizes Franklin's dead. But it seemed like a like a big clusterfuck. It seemed like, oh, I just fucked up and 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 accidentally killed myself. Uh Chop Top 
and Stretch have this fight. They're the only ones who survive the explosion. They wind up outside. They're fighting each other on this rock tower. And I do... This is the only moment where I like Stretch. Because I like when a character... Um, our main protagonist, even if they're, if the whole movie she's been sort of pathetic and sort of just scared and running, which I get, sure, I do. I like that she got to a point where she was sick of it. She wanted to fight back. She starts fighting back with him, beats the crap out of him, kills him, crushes his head, and he falls off of the, the rock tower, seemingly gets killed. Also, when stretch made it up the tower she saw a mummy version of their grandmother which i don't know did we really need this we we already did the grandfather twice uh, maybe i'd be more more okay with this if the grandfather wasn't here because it would make sense he'd be dead and then you see the mummified version of their grandmother they have like a shrine for her okay like that's interesting but after she kills Chop Top, she grabs Leatherface's chainsaw and she's screaming and she's shouting and she's whipping this chainsaw around, doing what, what they now call the chainsaw dance. I know Leatherface does this in the original. I know it's an iconic moment from the original because what's Leatherface left to do after Sally jumps on the truck and escapes? He doesn't get to kill his woman so he just screams maniacally it makes sense because he's unhinged and he's not all there and he doesn't know what the hell he's doing or, or or what makes sense so he just does this in a way that came off natural but now when you look back on it it comes off iconic having stretch do it it just it looks silly it does not have the same impact Maybe they're trying to establish that Stretch has been through this crazy ordeal and she's unhinged and crazy as well. I get that. But seeing her do the leather face dance, no! To me, this just looks dumb. Looks very dumb. And then, I don't know if this is just me, but does the grandmother move? Does she, like, get up and start walking towards Stretch right before the cameras, the movie fades to black. It just, maybe my mind is playing tricks with me or maybe they purposely shot it that way where it looks like that to make us wonder and make us think about it. This could be the case. There could be nothing to this. Either way though, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if the plan was that the grandmother was gonna awaken and kill a stretch right then and there, then great. We followed another character who just happens to die at the end and it makes us all seem for naught. And for her to have died in a dumbass way by a corpse coming back to life and killing her. Or if it's nothing and it's just to get us to talk again, well, my conversation following this movie would be fuck this movie. I don't care enough about any of that to wonder and to debate and to ask people what their thoughts are on this ending. I don't care. I think the movie sucks. I know that there are tons and tons of defenders of this movie. I know people love the change. They love that it went more comedic and it tried something different. And it's in the vision of the original director, so they just kind of trust him and go along with it. That's fine. A part of me does respect trying something new but this isn't the material to try something like this this isn't something that i wanted to see played up for laughs or played up for jokes this is some effed up stuff here and i know that nowadays we know the truth we know that it's not really uh, a true story the first movie played that up hard that this was 100 percent true it's based on ed gein and based on Stuff that happened in different ways and they just took it and redid it. That's fine. But now you're going so comedic that it just negates all of that. It negates all of the realism that I'm sure some people thought for real with the first film. And thought it was legit. You, there's, there's no possible way that if you didn't know, you wouldn't have known by this film. How fake and phony this story turns out to be. 
it's frustrating. More than anything else, it's frustrating to watch this film, especially when I binge the franchise every now and again, especially when I watch this movie right after watching the original, rewatching the original, and see the, the level of, of horror the first one does, and still to this day holds up with, with the low budget, just it, it did what it did very well. This second one, it's taken in a direction that I can't get behind. I can't pretend like I like it. I can't pretend to be into it. I hate it. And it's only not the worst Chainsaw movie because they keep making more that are worse and worse and worse. So guys, I'm sure there will be some people who disagree with me. So let me know in the comments below if you do like this film. What do you like about it? What's your favorite part? Why exactly do you like the jokiness? Or do you agree with me that this was not the direction to take and that this film absolutely sucks and it was a huge missed opportunity following up? Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Fast.